Hello, my name is Kerry Lewis and I'm a member of the MrBruff.com writing team. Today I'm going to talk about conditional sentences. In the English language there are five different ways to talk about things that might or might not happen, either in the present, past or future. Verbs, mostly doing words, or verb phrases, mostly two or more verbs together, give us a lot of information about possibilities. I like to imagine conditional sentences as steps. At the bottom are things that are certain to happen, and then as we climb the steps, things become less and less probable. In this video, I'm going to focus on why we use particular conditional sentences. I'm not going to talk about the grammar of how we make them, but if you're interested, I put the grammar in a separate box on each slide. Just look for this young lady and to where she's pointing, and if you are interested in the grammar, you can pause the video to read the information. Let's begin by looking at the zero conditional. We use this when we talk about facts. If you freeze water, it turns to ice. Well, we can't challenge that fact, can we? You can also swap each half of the sentence around to change the word order. Water turns to ice if you freeze it. And you can do this with all of the sentences that we're going to be looking at in today's video. Because we're talking about facts that we know are right, we can use when instead of if with the zero conditional. Now let's compare this to the first conditional. When we use the first conditional, we're talking about things that are likely to happen. We don't know for sure, but it's highly probable. For example, if the sun shines, we will go for a walk. Here, it's possible that the speaker has looked at the weather forecast, it's forecast sun, therefore it's likely that the sun will shine and therefore it's likely they'll go for a walk. We're now moving towards things that are becoming less and less likely. The second conditional describes an unlikely situation. If I had more time, I would write a book. Well, it's possible that you might have more time, but it's highly unlikely that you will write a book. If I were rich, I would buy a castle. Well, you might be rich already, but if you're not, you'd probably be very lucky to win the lottery, in which case you might consider buying a castle, but it's highly unlikely. When you say, if I were rich, this is the second conditional and it's also the subjunctive. In this example, we're using the subjunctive to talk about what you're imagining. And that's why we say, if I were rich, because you're imagining it, rather than if I was rich. The subjunctive is very formal and it's not used often in everyday speech, but it is on the key stage two curriculum and that's why I'm including it here. Now let's look at the third conditional. The third conditional is really interesting because it describes something that did not happen in the past. If I had left 10 minutes earlier, I would have arrived on time. Did I leave 10 minutes earlier? No. So did I arrive on time? No. This sentence talks about something that did not happen. You could also replace the word would here with could, might or may. With the conditionals that we've looked at so far, each sentence has talked about one period of time. It might be the past, the present or the future. With mixed conditionals, each half of the sentence or clause is about a different period of time. If I had studied harder for my exams, well that's the past, I would have a better job now, which is the present. If I hadn't argued with my friends, the past, I would be going on holiday with them next week, the future. So we can see that the conditionals are really interesting because they can talk about facts, probability, possibility, things that didn't happen, um, or they can be used to speculate. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to buy a copy of Mr. Bruff's Guide to Grammar, the link is in the description below. In the meantime, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next video.